we need to be prepared because we have some big things, major events occurring in the world right now. Events that have not occurred for 70, 80, or 90 years are going on right before our eyes. We don't want to stick our heads in the sand. We may not like what's going on, but we need to analyze it. We need to be realistic about what's occurring in the world and how to protect ourselves, how to provide security for our families, for ourselves. We choose to do that with silver and gold. How will these events that I'm going to talk about in this video, how will they impact the price of precious metals going forward? They will impact the price and we need to talk about them right now. We are going to dig into this list of fascinating items, but first, you are important and you are welcome here. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. You can share this with anyone you like, and don't forget, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Your input is critical. Have you noticed the general markets are crashing, or maybe we'll say correcting? Nonetheless, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ both recorded their third straight quarter of losses. That has not occurred since 2009. The S&P 500 year-to-date is down 25%. That means for every $100, you had in the S&P 500 at the beginning of the year, you now only have $75. The NASDAQ has fared much worse, down almost 34% since the beginning of the year. That means that one of your $3 you had at the beginning of the year has vanished. And that's no fun, unless you're a member of the United States Congress, because they get to play by a different set of rules. Let me read this to you. There was talk, initiative, <coughs> BS, that Congress would address the fact that they get to trade stocks on non-public information. Isn't that insider trading. Aren't some people put in jail for that? But it's okay with Congress. They were going to make some new rules. They've been saying they're going to do this for the last number of years, but they just didn't get around to it again. But I'm sure it will be the top of the list when they get back to work in November. I don't know how you feel about that, but it makes me mad. When we have people like Nancy Pelosi, our other elected supposed leaders, that it's okay for them to blatantly break the law? We could talk about Congress for hours, but we got a lot more to talk about. Let's move on to some company-specific information. Nike. I'm sure no one in Congress owned Nike because that stock took a nosedive last week. They put out a profit warning, cited the strong dollar. Inventory levels were up an astounding 44%. They predicted a very difficult holiday season and also mentioned big weakness in China. The stock on Thursday, Friday was down 13% alone. Things are not looking good for our friends at Nike. And have you heard of this company called Carvana? They're kind of like the Amazon of used cars. They sell used cars online, huge organization. Their stock has been decimated in the last 52 weeks, dropping from $300 all the way down to 20. That is brutal, brutal. They mentioned weak sales. They mentioned weak demand from their customers and rising used car prices. What's going on? The consumers aren't buying as much, but prices are still going up. Kind of sounds like stagflation to me. And the list goes on. What about good old Apple computer, the bellwether of the United States economy? Well, Bloomberg put out a report that they are decreasing production of their brand new iPhone 14 because of faltering demand. They also cited the strong U.S. dollar, right? What the Fed is doing with this aggressive monetary policy, creating a strong dollar as a major, major problem for Apple. In this economic climate, who can afford a new Apple iPhone anyway? People are having a hard enough time buying real apples to put food in their stomach. 
At least when they buy the real apples, they can still brag to their friends, yeah, I bought a new apple today. We got a lot more to talk about, but it's worth mentioning that Apple's main competitor, Samsung, reduced their estimate for the second half of the year. Semiconductor sales reduced by 30%. The main financial press in South Korea said that it was a virtual ice age in the electronics industry, cited the world economy, cited the aggressive policy by the world central banks as basically slamming on the brakes for electronics sales. Let's switch over to real estate because there'll be plenty of good news there, right? Wrong. Morgan Stanley came out saying they're predicting next year, 2023, in the United States that home prices will fall significantly. We also have, on a worldwide basis, a real problem with mortgages resetting in much of the world. Real estate loans are two to three year terms. At current mortgage rates, we're looking at a lot of people when they have to refinance their loans, their mortgage payments going up by 50, 70, even 100%. Things do not look rosy in the real estate sector. Prices aren't necessarily crashing right now, but on the demand side with these increased payments, there just aren't gonna be a lot of new buyers coming to the market. This is all causing central banks around the world to panic. As a matter of fact, this week, big, big story. The Bank of England, who had been very hawkish, very aggressive in their monetary policy, completely waffled, completely pivoted, and started a QE program where they are now buying long-term bonds. Part of the reason behind that is this mortgage situation I talked about. Everything is moving very quickly and starting to show big signs of stress. And we know how stress feels, right? As a matter of fact, NerdWallet reported that today in 2022, the average American family is spending over $11,000 more on their basic necessities than they did just two years ago in 2020 when Joe Biden's economic miracle was just in its infancy. But that's okay because we can all just run on down to Rent-A-Center, the lowest rung of retail in the United States. We can run over there and get a new big screen TV. We can rent it, pay by the week. Everything will be okay because Rent-A-Center is desperate for customers. They announced this week bad sales numbers. Their stock crashed by 20%. Now think about this, guys. That's the lowest rung. That's like the dollar store, which is also having problems. Even the lowest end, right, where people go when they're desperate, is now showing big signs of strain. But we don't have to worry about anything because everybody will have a lot more money once Joe Biden buys everybody's vote. Oh, I meant to say forgives everyone's student loans. But there's a new lawsuit filed by a libertarian group to block that from happening. We'll see how that plays out. We'll see how all this plays out. Things are dicey out there, guys. We know gold, silver are the ultimate safety deposit. They've seen all this craziness before. And as things unravel, we can rest assured that we have an asset that's been around for thousands and thousands of years. You can rest assured that you're always welcome here in Ron's Basement. I really appreciate you joining me today. If you want to watch another video, you can do that right here. Until next time, be well.